Centuries of Oppression, The Road to 1918. Chapter 7, The Chartists. The suffragettes did not invent campaigning for suffrage. In addition to the various peasant uprisings of earlier centuries, working men's movements had campaigned for the right to vote since the end of the 18th century. In contrast to the swing rioters and Peterloo victims, the famous toll puddle martyrs of 1834 were insignificant in number, just six, but significant in regard to the growing political awareness. They were transported for the crime of forming a trade union. Their Bible was Thomas Paine's Rights of Man, and they called for universal male suffrage. Enter the Chartist movement, the first truly mass movement of the common people with primarily political objectives. The Chartists were disparate groups of men, agitating to be enfranchised and active in the early Victorian era. The main policy of the Chartists was to achieve universal male suffrage. In their early days they were so radical as to propose universal suffrage for both sexes, but quickly retrenched on the grounds that votes for women was rather too great a stretch. In the end, of course, universal male suffrage was barely achieved before that of women, as we shall see. The Chartists' principal objective was votes for all men over 21 and a secret ballot. They also called for any man to be eligible to stand for Parliament and for MPs to be paid so as to enable working men to take up the post. These demands were put in the form of a People's Charter, giving the movement its name. The Chartists rather lacked cohesion in their early years. From the start there was tension between those advocating physical force and those who were against it. However, the Chartists became better organised than earlier working class political movements. The Depression of 1841-42 led to a wave of strikes in which Chartist activists were in the forefront and demands for the Charter were included alongside economic demands. Hundreds of Chartists were arrested and either imprisoned or transported to Australia. In 1848, the Chartists organised a mass meeting on Kennington Common, attended by about 150,000 people, a testament to the extent of their popular support. The government was nervous about the revolutionary precedents being set in Europe in 1848, as they would be again in 1917. Accordingly, the Chartists' convention was met by an emphatic display of the establishment's power in the form of 100,000 special constables, recruited specifically to bolster the police force. In the event, the meeting was peaceful, but emergency planning had extended to the military standing by in case the Chartists made any attempt to cross the Thames. Their high point was a three and a half million signature petition in favour of their People's Charter, which was presented to Parliament in 1842. It took several cabs to transport to Downing Street. The movement was also organised enough to have its own newspapers such as the Northern Star, which ran the following article in May 1842 after the petition had been rejected by Parliament. Three and a half millions have quietly, orderly, soberly, peaceably but firmly asked of their rulers to do justice, and their rulers have turned a deaf ear to that protest. Three and a half millions of people have asked permission to detail their wrongs and enforce their claims for right, and the House has resolved that they should not be heard. Three and a half millions of the slave class have holden out the olive branch of peace to the enfranchised and privileged classes and sought for a firm and compact union on the principle of equality before the law. And the enfranchised and privileged have refused to enter into a treaty. The same class is to be a slave class still. 
The mark and brand of inferiority is not to be removed. The assumption of inferiority is still to be maintained. The people are not to be free. The failure of the Chartists left the proportion of adult men who had the parliamentary vote at around 10%. The sacrifice of a mere few hundred men by the Chartists was insufficient. It would take the deaths of millions in World War I to finally buy the working class vote. Despite its failure, the Chartist movement raised working class political consciousness and also provided a model of how the working class could be organised politically. Arguably, this provided the model for the later rise of the trade unions and the labour movement. In the second half of the 19th century, the Chartist movement gradually gave way to the trade union movement as a voice for the working class. The Chartist movement was in some ways the male equivalent of the suffragette protests, but the working class Chartists attracted a far larger number of active participants.